So we're going to kick this section off with a broad overview of wireless networking. And as we progress in this section, as always, we're going to take a deeper dive look at wireless networking. So the standard for wireless networking is IEEE 802.11, and it's been around for over 20 years. And in fact, it's been updated and improved over the years to the point where we have multiple different newer standards that come out throughout the years. And we'll take a look at these later in this section. But what I want you to understand now is that over time, 802.11 continues to improve. So how do wireless networks work? Well, we know that there aren't any physical cables in a truly wireless network. So instead of using cables, they use radio frequencies that travel throughout the air. Specifically, they're radiated into the air via antenna. So any device that is connected to a wireless network, they're going to have a wireless network interface card, and they're going to have at least one antenna. And those antenna allow them to communicate via the radio frequencies and specifically radio waves. Now in this day and age, it's very common for people to be connected almost 100% to a wireless network. So if you look at a lot of households and even a lot of small businesses, a lot of the devices are going to be connected via a wireless connection. However, a majority of networks, at some point, they're connected to a wired network. So in many instances, a wireless network is going to be an extension of a wired network, where it simply extends a larger local area network or even multiple networks together. So when you think about a wireless network, a majority of the time, it's going to be an extension of a wired network. But theoretically, that doesn't mean we can't have a network that's 100% wireless. We could. So for example, we could take a residential grade Soho device. We could plug it into an outlet where it has electricity, log into it, simply just set up the wireless LAN and don't connect it to a wired network and then connect a bunch of devices to it. And they would be connected between themselves via a wireless LAN but they wouldn't be connected to any sort of a wired network. So theoretically, you could do this. And in fact, if you were setting up a sandbox testing environment, such as a computer lab, this would be a very easy way to set up a lab without having to have wires. But really, in a lot of instances, at some point, we are connecting to a wired network. So now let's take a look at the difference between a traditional wireless LAN and a point-to-point -point wireless LAN. So the type of wireless LAN that most people are going to be familiar with is a traditional wireless LAN where we have a wireless access point that connects to a bunch of devices. And this could be, for example, a Soho device at your home. So I'll go ahead and I'll write in Soho and I'll put in parentheses at home. It could also be, for example, at a coffee shop where they have a wireless access point and you connect to that. And it's going to be essentially any device that you can connect to it. So for example, in your home, you could have a smart TV with Roku or something else connecting to it. You could have a PlayStation or an Xbox connecting to it. Of course, you're going to have laptops that are going to connect to these and desktops as well. We have tablets or an iPad and our smartphones are generally always connecting at home to our Wi-Fi. So those are the types of devices that we would typically see and be most familiar with in a traditional LAN environment. Now in an enterprise environment from building to building, it's also common to have a point to point wireless connection or a point to point wireless LAN where we have building number one and we have building number two and we need to be able to connect them together and it's not very efficient or easy to connect a cable so an easy way is to have directional antennas on the roof where they can communicate back and forth to one and another and it could be as simple as if they were in the same office park but they're far enough away where there are different buildings where it would be difficult to connect an actual cable or it could be even further away but it is common wherever it's not very practical or easy to connect a cable like so to go to this solution instead where we have antenna connecting one building to another. And an example of one that I'm aware of when I got one of my first IT jobs 
decades ago, we supported a building where we had their servers in our room. We were in the same business park, but their building was on the other side of an alley that people commonly used. And the buildings were only about 20 feet apart. But when you have a bunch of cars going through the alleyway, it makes it difficult to connect them via a wired connection. So the most affordable route and the most practical route was to set up a point to point wireless connection. So that's the difference between a traditional LAN and a point to point wireless connection. Let's now do a bit of a refresher on the wireless access point. So we already talked about the wireless access point earlier in the course. So I'm going to keep this slide pretty brief. I just want to make sure that we do a quick refresher so you understand the difference between a wireless access point and a Soho device. I want you to understand that a WAP or a wireless access point is a bridge that extends a wired network onto a wireless network like we see right here. We have a cable connecting a switch to a wireless access point so these wireless devices can get access to our wired network and that's the purpose of a wireless access point. Understand this is not a router so for example if we wanted to connect this network to the internet we would go ahead and we connect a router to it to give it internet connectivity or give it access to another network. So again that's the purpose of a wireless access point. It simply extends a wired network onto a wireless network. So now let's take a look at antenna type when it comes to wireless networks. So there are two primary categories of antenna for wireless networks. There are omnidirectional antennas and there are unidirectional antennas. And I have them depicted here on the screen. An omnidirectional antenna goes in every direction meaning the antenna is going to send the signal in a 360 degrees arc everywhere. Whereas a unidirectional antenna is going to send it in one direction, like we see right here in our point to point connection from one building to another. In home offices, in places like Starbucks or other coffee shops where they have internet access, it's always going to be, for the most part, it's going to be omnidirectional. In a business environment, you may have within a building, you may have antennas where in the center of the building, they have a wireless access point and it's omnidirectional, but on the edge of the building, on one of the walls where you only want it going into the building, they may put a unidirectional antenna. So that's the difference. It's pretty basic and it's pretty straightforward. Omnidirectional sends our signals in all directions, whereas unidirectional is focused in one direction. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that antenna strength, it's gonna be measured in DBI, and the higher the DBI, the further the distance will travel. So when you're looking at antenna, if you're shopping for them, understand that the higher the DBI, the further the signal will travel. So now let's take a look at the SSID. So when you go onto your laptop or your tablet or your smartphone or your smart TV, and you go to connect it to a wireless network, and you bring up a list of the wireless networks, well, the list that you see, that we see right here, for example, in Windows 10 where I took a screenshot, these are SSIDs. We call the name of a network that is publicly sent out so devices can see it. We call that the service set identifier. Now, the SSID is nothing more than the network's name. So when we have a wireless access point or a Soho device, we set that up so it can broadcast out the SSID. Now, from a network security perspective, we can also disable our SSID. And in fact, it's best practices to disable it. But it's not a sure proof method for protecting your wireless network. It's just one way to keep it a bit more secure where it's harder to find your network. So that's what the SSID is. It's nothing more than the name of your wireless network. Lastly, I want to take a look at CSMA slash CA. So if you remember from our section on switching, we talked about CSMA slash CD. Well, that's because wired Ethernet networks, they use CSMA slash CD. However, wireless networks, specifically wireless Ethernet networks, they use CSMA slash CA. And the difference is instead of collision detection, they use collision avoidance. So that's the difference between wired and wireless Ethernet networks. So why is that? 
Well, it's because with a wireless network, it's a lot more difficult to detect collisions. So the solution is to try to avoid them altogether. And it works through a series of RTSs and CTSs, which we'll talk about right now in this diagram. So an RTS is a request to send and a CTS is a clear to send. So the way that it works is that we have a device and let me get rid of the highlighting. We have a laptop, for example, and this laptop has prepared a frame of data to send across the wireless network. Well, before it can send it, it has to first check the network to see if there's any activity. So what it'll do is it'll see if there's any activity on the network. If there is, it's gonna wait a random amount of time and then repeat the process. Now, once it's clear, when there's no activity on the network, it's going to send an RTS to the wireless access point. Essentially, it's gonna ask the wireless access point for permission to send the data. So it's gonna send the request to send, the wireless access point is gonna get it, and it's gonna respond with a CTS, or the clear to send. The wireless access point will give it an okay, and then it can send its data. However, if the wireless access point doesn't give it a clear to send, well, it's gotta start all over. It's gotta wait a random amount of time and repeat the process. So that's how it works. It's fairly simple compared to CSMA slash CD. CSMA slash CA has a more simplified process of RTSs and CTSs. So that's CSMA slash CA from a high level perspective. And that's gonna conclude our overview to kick off this section. So if you have any questions as to what we covered in this lecture, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.